Hello again, welcome to space. So this will be the ascent of the uh, North American Rockwell um, MEM craft. So here it is on the surface of Mars in a previous video. I had it pretty close to the surface and then it caught something in the air, something weird. So I have, uh, you know, I've put it, put it down nicely on the equator using, uh, using hyperetic because I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that landing and demonstrate an ascent. So here we are on the surface. So uh, I haven't checked, actually I may as well give it a quick look. So let's see, uh, crew transfer, how does crew transfer work? So this, there's just so many components to this, like this core stage that it um, just has this crazy long window. So let's see if I click on, why does it do that? Why would you do that? All right, now I want, Mm, transfer crew, there we go. Uh, I don't know if that will necessarily work. Transfer, sure, let's try Bob and see if it'll let him move there. This module is either full or internally unreachable. Yeah, I think uh, this in-betweeny part would need a would need to be passable by CLS because I think I have CLS installed. Yeah, I have CLS installed. But anyway, that's the way that you would actually pass a crew from there through uh, there's a decoupler bit there that will need will, would need a CLS um, configuration, and then this is a lab. I think is it called? Yeah, it's kind of configured as a lab, and then you know humans will be able to get down to the surface of Mars. Uh, so let us shut off the descent engine because we won't be using that, and then we have the ascent engine which will uh, power up. So let's turn on the RCS so we can aim ourselves, then turn on the engine, and once it's warmed up, boom, we'll detach from that descent stage, goodbye, and now, so it's what, about 17 tons on the way up? <laughs> All right, and so now we're going to uh, head to orbit. So I tried setting up the tanks, um, so these ones should be pulling fuel priority, yeah, so the fuel should be pulling out of these, there we go, these two tanks, and those should be the two that drop off first. Uh, again, this um, this ascender has a pretty high uh, thrust weight ratio engine. I have to check what the, the actual North American Rockwell documentation or suggestion plans for what it would be, but I mean, it's, it's a pretty good uh, thrust weight ratio even just at the sea level there. And it's, uh, I guess you can't see right now because the plume, the plume probably needs to be expanded because it's using a lot of particles even though it's not showing. Uh, a whole ton. And it's a little hard to tell when you're empty of fuel, so I'll just pop that up. All right. Um, hmm. Let's just head to a generic orbit, I suppose. It doesn't particularly matter uh, where we end up. So, so those tanks are drained and they drop off like that very nicely. And now uh, this tank here, let me just peg it so I can tell when it is done. And that tank. So I'm not sure why the <coughs> why the staging doesn't show up until you start ascending, but yeah, basically you're just dropping off these empty tanks <laughs> as they as they drain out. So it, you're you're losing the dry mass of those kind of additional drop tanks. It's like a kind of a realistic, uh, more real uh, realism overhaul, real solar system version of drop tanks, like you'd use in um, or like asparagus staging almost in in stock. All right, so we're just ascending from the surface, and I'm kind of keeping an eye on those numbers. I can probably go. Uh, just because this time still you know, keeps increasing, at some point I'm going to be coasting to AP, so I want to kind of reduce how much of that I end up doing. And those tanks are drained. So as you can see, you know, it, it's not a, a you, you, you land, you come in with about a 55 ton craft uh, from orbit. So you know, if you're imagining your mission backwards, you have to have a mothership that can get this heavy beast and a, a happy, healthy crew from Earth to Mars orbit. In a mothership of some kind, then they the crew can be passed into here, which would, probably would require some kind of change of the config, so it could dock with whatever you know whatever you're docking with if it's from some other mod. Uh, oh yes, and then, so now it's draining from all four of these tanks. You could probably set it up so it did a pair again, but uh, it's fine. That's this is kind of the way it was originally set up, and so I'm okay dropping four tanks in the last go rather than uh, rather than two pairs separately. All right, so we're two minutes out. Let's just, uh, well, mm, just do a manual pitch down. So the RCS isn't doing too much. It's just kind of keeping it from kind of picking up a, 
a, a procession, you know, kind of roll, or rolling around its center of mass. Um, yeah, the plume definitely could be expanded, but it at least it, it definitely is using a real plume um, configuration of some kind, or else it would not be showing that number. So it just kind of needs to be maybe pushed a little bit out of the nozzle and expanded up. But you know, it uh, looks really good. Anyway, can you come in with 55 tons? And, and then you, the ascender was what, about 15 tons, something like that. Uh, and then once we're in orbit, it's like something like a seven or five ton dry mass. It's, it's actually you know, a, very, a fairly light craft, probably a, a little lighter than it should be. I'm not sure, again, um, it kind of feels weird to be able to fit five people or so on something that's relatively light, so light, but I mean, Mars's atmosphere is fairly thin. So as an ascender, it doesn't need to be as um, <coughs> heavily built as as a true rocket uh, launching from Earth, so that's fair, I suppose. And those drop tanks have emptied, and there we go. We dropped the last set of total uh, tanks. And now it is a very light craft, which is just this core fuel tank, engine, RCS. It's basically like an oversized like LEM ascent stage at this point. Uh, and that's the, you know that's the whole the whole story. It's, this is how it gets itself back up to the orbit of Earth, or <laughs> of Mars. And then you'd want to rendezvous with your mothership again. So this uh, this craft is able to kind of keep the people alive on the surface um, for you know for a couple weeks or a month or something like that for a, a quick surface sortie. And it doesn't rely on any ISRU. You know, it's not a Mars Direct type craft. It's very much 19 uh, late 70s or 80s technology. Um, and yeah, that's that's the whole trick of it. And then you just need to get it to dock with your mothership. You transfer the crew back to that for transfer back to Earth, you know, whenever that window is. So I'm just going to wait till this is about, let's say, 150 kilometers. We want it to be, up, you know, we want to be above the atmosphere. And <clears throat> so you can't see, it's, it's a little hard to see all the stats. Oh man, this window just does crazy things. Um, but it does have like an, <clears throat> it does have an inbuilt engine down there. Um, and it's not listing those engine properties the way you'd normally expect a real fuel engine to, to list them. Um, <clears throat> I believe it can be messed up by... Maybe I've got something weird about... Maybe it's just kind of popped in there too much. Like Maybe I didn't pull the engine apart properly. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'm going to have to rebuild this from, from scratch parts. Uh, I think some, there probably is still some clipping of some kind. Actually, if I hover over the engine... Yeah, yeah, there we go. See, the engine is accidentally embedded in that so that might be part of why it behaves a little oddly or the plume doesn't look quite right because it's uh, the uh, the engine hasn't been properly pulled out all right so let's see nine minutes to ap so we're just going to coast towards that <laughs> the atmosphere is pretty thin at this point but we are losing a little bit of uh of altitude as you can see by the from the drag on the air the drag due to air Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just waiting for it to coast AP. I don't remember what, what altitude is it where you can go above physical time warp. I think it's 130 or something like that. So maybe I should have um, set it to go for an AP of a little higher. But I just want to see how much uh, delta V we can get left, uh, be left with in this. So I don't know if I'd, I don't, don't think I'd use this specific ascender for my own Mars Direct type thing, uh, because it, it's a really it is a really cramped it is a fairly small space for the number of people. Although I might only bring like three or four people for uh, for my version of Mars Direct. Are we still? Whoa, 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 well, actually, I wasn't so bad. So let's tell it to go prograde. Let's turn the engine back on here, get it pointed forward. All right, and then just kind of wait until we approach that AP. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't quite found the right ascent profile for this craft, where I don't have to do a coast AP the way you would uh, you would in stock. But it might just be because the uh, thrust weight range of this engine is so great. Uh, one way I do that on my kind of my ISRU test craft is by having many engines, and you kind of dump some of the engines with some of the tanks. Oh, we're now pushing AP a bit further away from us, but I suppose that's acceptable. Let's go with a very light acceleration here. This is just this is like the like one g of Martian gravity actually with as low as we're throttled down right now where are we throttled to <laughs> just like 17 it's such a light craft such a, a very small amount of thrust is 
uh, causing it to push. And it has a really high specific impulse, which is another thing which I find a little odd, just because it's um, it is liquid burning liquid methane and flux, which is which is a fluorine uh, including fuel, which is kind of a crazy fuel to use. But perhaps North American Rockwell was considering that because of the high performance of the fuel. Uh, in in the book Journey itself, they use um, hypergolic fuels, which would have a lower ISP than that. So you might need an even bigger landed craft or something like that, or you just might not have the spare delta V that we end up with here. But uh, nonetheless, we have uh, successfully kind of kind of landed the craft. We got it to orbit. So if there was a mothership here, if we had had a mothership, we'd want to have matched orbits with it, and it would um, you know take the crew back, and then it would take them home. So this has been kind of my demonstration of the landing and ascent of the NAR Mem uh, by Takala Dreaming. Uh, Tiktaalik Dreaming, uh, which is just great. Somebody created kind of uh, real fuel-esque, uh, you know, configurations for it. So it's it's you know, I'd say it's like 90, 95, 98 uh, percent close to like kind of the ideal realism overhaul config. It's a really good config. Uh, so definitely recommend trying it out in a real solar system, or you could you know try it on stock. I think it does have stock behavior as well. But yeah. Uh, I definitely plan to use some parts from this for my own Mars Direct. Just like I'm kind of picking and grabbing parts uh, from various things for my own uh, for my own mission in my RP0, my regular RP0 series, which should start up again sometime soon. You know, who, who knows? Could be a week, could be a couple of weeks. It just depends on how much time I have and how easily I can get a stable RP0 um, set up in 1.2. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been uh, the ascent of an ahistorical descender, but it is based on a uh, North American Rockwell concept for landing people on Mars and returning them safely to Mars orbit. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.